So, how do we make $10 million? Either you just earn it or build a business that I could sell for about 15 and then if, any, if I have any partners or tax strategies, I should net around 10 million. So we just backtrack. How do you build a company that can sell for 15 million? A company that has multiple channels of acquisition that consistently generate business and EBITDA around three to five million would be able to sell for that much, no problem. So the goal is how do you consistently generate clients worth three to five million a year? And the more I think about it, the more I like the COO brokerage model. So thinkable agency, we have our own COOs, our own talent, that have licenses that they pay to be trained by us and be licensed by us. Um, and in return, we help them uh, get clients and negotiate contracts for rev share and um, an earn out, like a, or what's, I don't know, I forget what the proper term is for We don't want to take equity. We just want a contract in place that is payable upon sale and a portion of profit. Um, and then Thinkable collects it and pays out to our COOs their earnings, which would be 80, maybe 80% 80 of the total earning our side of the earnings. So let's say we increase profits by a hundred grand and we negotiate to keep 50% of additional profit. Um, and we take no upfront fee, so it's risk-free, but we get 50% of the profit. And Thinkable would get 50 grand total and COO, our COO would get 40 grand and Thinkable would keep 10 plus the licensing fee for the COO. Um, so I like that model because that way if we can have a strong client retention, which I mean if we're helping generate more and more revenue profit each month and each year. Although we're getting 50%, perhaps we renegotiate as the numbers get bigger and bigger. So we keep the incentive for them to keep us. Um, and they're not so incentivized to fire us and just try and do it themselves because 50% can get to a lot, to be a lot if we're talking about three to five million a year. It would be seeing us as an expense of like one and a half million. So I think we renegotiate every year, but if we have strong client retention, then to get Thinkable's EBITDA to three million, we basically need to have our earnout from all of our companies and all our COOs be. 15 million or so because Thinkable gets to keep 20% yeah that makes sense we keep 20% um, so we'd have to increase businesses if we were taking 50% by 30 million in order to reach our goal so 30 million, if we have systems in place where we know we can add, let's say, 100 grand to a service business in the first year, then we need 
30. You'd need 300 businesses. Right? 100,000 times 10. It's 1 million times 30. Sorry, that. 300 businesses increased by 100 grand. It sounds like it's going to become operationally complex. If you had 300 COOs that you needed to find, train, license, and find companies for. So we need to address that problem. I guess we need 10 times less companies if we had uh, no one way to add a million and perhaps we get into longer agreements from the beginning or after the first renewal no just to add a million to a business that's only doing 300,000 I mean it's possible it's a triple but things would have to go very smoothly so, to be cautious, probably two to three years should be able to turn a good service and add that much profit. It's hard, it's hard to focus on driving and do the math. <laughs> So yeah, I like that approach though. The goal is 10 million, how do we get there? So by the sounds of it, we're gonna need to be good at finding, acquiring, training, and what's the word? Deploying COOs. And we're going to need an in-house, I don't know what the position would be, but a report for all the COOs to ensure that they have the help they need and are not just alone. I know when I was a realtor, brokerages, they try and help, but they don't have known ways that they can help you. You know, I want to create a system where People can learn how to become an operator, or operators can come and learn our way of doing things and know that they can make good money, they have unlimited upside, and that they'll have the support they need. So I want to build a good opportunity for us, the owners, the future acquirer, or if we don't decide to sell, if it's a profit machine and we just want to keep it us in the future, so us now, us in the future, investors in the future, our clients, the businesses we're trying to grow, our growth partners, our, meaning our COOs, um, yeah, so I want it to be a win, 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 win. I think it's possible. I like this a lot better than traditional consulting. I think consulting is helpful for bigger businesses that have teams that can implement consultants' advice and are and have their own set of higher skilled employees. But I think for small businesses that have especially service businesses where it's usually very operationally heavy and owners are just managing one labor team or something like that. Um, they don't have the talent to implement strategies or the time, you know, they're just operating. So I think by being an agency and bringing in and 
having zero investment strategies where they don't have to spend any more money than they currently are. And just by analyzing the business, restructuring offers, pricing, sales process, those things, increasing the profit and the lifetime value per customer, lowering the cost of acquisition, just all these efficiency metrics and easy opportunities, like take advantage of the low hanging fruit first, um, prove that we can grow their business and then once we generate them more money, they'll likely be much more willing to invest time and money to do more advanced strategies or it doesn't even have to be more advanced, just scale it up by spending more money. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. And I like, I finally feel like, this is just how it goes, you know, when you start something new, you have, you know there's something there but you don't know exactly what it is. And I mean, I love the process of figuring it out. You know, what does everyone want? What would be the offer that I would want if I was them? What offer do I want as the owner of the business? How are we gonna deliver it? I like the balancing, the creation of something that didn't exist before, but will be valuable for everyone that touches it, you know, I, and I have never met someone that had a company that did this for them, so I think it's unique and it's not changing the world, but it will affect the lives, who gets involved with it. Yeah, I hope we can spread the message of kindness and giving and growth and, yeah, growth and contribution while we're all trying to feel significant, you know? People talk a lot about ego, but ego death's a hard thing, I think. It's okay to want to feel significant as long as your sense of significance doesn't come from belittling others but instead helping and raising others up so yeah that's it i think this was the most i guess i didn't speak very well but if i trim this down to what i was working out in my, as i was speaking it out loud i think this was the most productive or clear vision of what i want for the business and yeah I guess the really long-term goal is to be an education company where we build these proven models with our clients and we have the intellectual property of the systems and we can sell those systems as like blueprints. So basically no matter what business or what stage you're at, we have a list of service businesses that you could start where we know what to offer, we know what ads to run, we know how to run the operations, we know what roles are required and everything's laid out and you just follow it step by step. I think that would be so cool to just be like, make business so accessible that instead of going to school, you could choose to just get one of these courses and start and do hard shit.